See, the mag a lot of the magic stuff don't work. That's why they're putting all this shit in. The you can go to a regular bookstore and buy all that magic. It don't work now because the cycle, this was a lot of stuff was for another cycle. That cycle has changed now. Now the magic is supposed to be mental power where you're supposed to not do a practical application, but you're supposed to will this shit in the mind. So they're putting out all of this type of stuff. So when you go back, you be doing these little rituals and shit, and you ain't getting nothing. The key is it just to study this to get a to to get a affirmation of what your own powers are. So it's like a case study. So you can look at the text and actually see the power in it. So it's more of a more it's, it's, it's more of a study than it is a practical application. That's why they started letting all that shit out. Don't let them fool you. If this shit was dangerous, the white ball wouldn't let it out. You understand? So the key is to get it into the subconscious, other than the technique. So in the book, I want to read it to you. This is so this book here deals with the subconscious. On page two, Philip Cooper's book, Magic, a study in effective magic. So you can also use this in the subconscious just for not just magic as far as trying to blow up something, just for shit that you want to deal with and put energy to it, just whether you're on the job or whatever. Somebody fucking with you, or you want to get us you want to get another promotion. This magic is supposed to be used for everyday life on that level. So therefore, you know, you use it and you will it. And they gotta give it to you. You understand what I'm saying? So he'll get he goes into the science and he said, well, let me give you a few exercises at the end just to build a psychic laboratory. So he's not necessarily saying you get into all the ritual and all that stuff. He's saying, we're just giving you these exercises so you can know the power of your own mind. But it says, page two, the subconscious mind is a is a powerhouse, which is inside of you. Anytime you enter a subconscious, that means melanin. Dreamland. The subconscious mind is a powerhouse. It creates around us all that it believes to be true, according to the instructions we give it. So if you believe that the white man is God, until you get that shit out of your mind, he gonna be God. And your shit gonna be less. Because your subconscious is only, it's a cosmic computer. And it's only gonna deal with what you tell it. So if you don't change your thinking, you don't get it. You get how this shit go. That's how the world is. The melanin is called the shadow, and the shadow is what a reflection. It's only a reflection of what your conscience gives it. So I told you, I bypassed some other damn zodiacs and shit, because I told myself, hey, I'm the shit. You see, that's confidence. You see what I'm coming from? So, the subconscious mind is a powerhouse. It creates to you, all around you, what it believes to be true. So whatever it believes to be true, that's what it's going to deal with. According to the instructions you give it, everything around you and ev everything around you and everything that has been attracted to you is like a magnet. It is, it, it is impossible to stop this creation process. Even when you leave the earth, it will continue, it will carry out, it will carry on creating for you and serving you. So that's why I was saying, that's what I'm saying about this libation and all that shit. You got to get on top of that because this is your own subconscious that you're dealing with. And we are at a war to regain our consciousness. They tell you in doom, what do they tell you in doom? The sleeper must awake. The sleeper must awake. He must take the water of life. The water is called your subconscious. It's called the wave, the ocean. That's the Leviathan, your subconscious. So... Even, uh, so, so even after you leave, it keeps on serving you. For this purpose, uh, to attract to you all what you need. It does not reason. It just accepts instructions that are believed to be in your best interest. Before it will change its created pattern, it has to conceive the new instructions to be valid. This is where the will and the conscious mind comes into picture. And what this means is, the white boy has given you his reality, his computer. And no matter how much you quote it and say that the black man is this and the black woman is this and I'm the goddess this and I'm all that, until you get it out of the subconscious, you still a goddamn slave. You get where I'm coming from here? Because the subconscious does not reason, it only accepts what you're giving it. And you might be giving your consciousness, giving it all this shit in, but you're giving your, your subconscious the same old bullshit 
that you grew up with. Well, let's go and see what he says about that. This is an awesome book because they, they got so many of these books on this magic stuff. But a lot of these people are writing this shit because the, the X Files is out. So shit, this this new age man is hot. So they gotta make books to make money, and the Lou Allen and all these people is telling them, hey, we need people to come in. So they write a whole lot of bullshit. They don't even know what they're talking about. But every now and then you get a person that has studied and he know what the deal is, and he can get cut through all the complicated stuff, and that's when the person really knows when he can simplify stuff. So this particular book here is one of the better books out of all that stuff. And at this particular time, it's probably the only one you need on magic because you're trying to deal with the subconscious other than a whole lot of ritual. You see what I'm coming from here? Now I want to read something to you here. Look, um... The, the, the chapter on the magical mind. Let me see. Hold on. Um, the magical mind, page 35. Y'all all right? Yeah. Listen. Okay. Before moving, so he's saying that in actuality, this subconscious has to deal with everything. But what's happening is that somebody done gave you some facts in reality. Now look at this. Before moving to the ultimate power of the subconscious mind, we ought to spend a little time looking at what we call facts. Since your birth. Much of what you know has been given to you by someone else. You see, uh, your parents, your teacher, society, television, and so on. You have been given the facts, and your subconscious mind has been acting on these facts ever since. From now on, you must question these facts to say if they are indeed really true. Uh, to see if they, excuse me, are they, uh, uh, if they are indeed really true. Or most important, if they are true for you. Because what's the white man's truth for him and works for him might not be for you. You see. As I have already mentioned, quite widely known that your character is modeled the first two years of your life. From then on you accept, you are set in your ways. Do you remember? The idea that I have given in chapter one on the traditional lines of thinking, and it goes on to say that basically it's all based on all this particular stuff. And here's one, even if you are not a Christian, as I am not, you still have to conform to Christian ideas of dogma. You see, and now millions of laws that prop up the original Ten Commandments. And there are still many things that you cannot do on Sunday. And, and if you go into court, you are expected to swear oath to a Christian Bible. So it goes into saying that this Christian church, like I was saying, all this shit here has got you locked down and fucked up in the mind. And even when we become Afrocentric in consciousness, we just change the damn deities. But we still look at them with a Judeo-Christian and even Islamic view. Because there's also an esoteric Islam, and that shit will bound down to our lives bullshit to another form of slavery. Like Dr. Ben said, you're jumping from the pot to the goddamn frying pan. Either way, you're going to get burnt anyway. Because there's always the esoteric counterpart. There's Sufism, which is the real shit. And Islam, Islam come from some Persian shit called Ismailianism. You see what I'm saying? You don't know nothing about that because, see, that's the shit that they got up in Princeton that they hide from your ass. But if you go to Boys and Nobles or uh, if you can order them and look at the Ernos papers, they call some books put out, edited by Joseph Campbell. And they call it Ernos papers. And one of the writers is dealing with the real Sufism. It's called Henry Corbin if you want to get real Sufism. And there's a whole shit on there on Ismailianism. And that's where Islam comes from. 